Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of the Big East Rewind. I'm Chuck Everson, your host from Villanova University, and my partner, the doctor, Dr. Sonny Sparra. How are you, Sonny? Chuck, I'm great. Been looking forward to this one for a while. Can't wait. Yeah, this is going to be great because, uh, you know, it's the changing of the guard now at Villanova. Uh, we got a new top cat. Uh, that's going to be taking over the program, and the program couldn't Top be in cat. better hands. Ooh. Could not Top be in cat. better Good hands, Sonny. You know, yeah. listen, you I know, like I'm I'm in touch with the alumni, and everybody to a man, you know, once they found out that Jay was going to leave, um, they all are excited for the guy that's coming in, and he is our guest today. So let me, without any further ado, introduce Kyle Neptune, the new head coach at Villanova University. How are you, Kyle? Wow, that's a great intro. Thanks, Chuck. I appreciate that. Um, thank I'm you for coming great. on, pal. Uh, thank you for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, and, really appreciate and like, it. And, and like I said, Kyle, I mean, you know, it's funny because you hear the rumors, right? And, and we, no one knew what was going on. And all of a sudden, it, it's coming to fruition. And everybody had questions like, who's this guy, Neptune? Who's what's up with this guy? Who's this guy? So those of us know, no, you know, those of us are in the family, Kyle, know the deal, you know? So everybody to a man, you know, the alumni have your back a hundred percent, but everybody to a man were like, if we had to have somebody come in, we want this guy, you know? So you had everybody's support and still have everybody's support. So you should know that going forward. I mean, the guys are excited you know, from all different years, not just the 85 team, you know, from, you know, prior to us and after us, everybody's excited to have you. So um, hoping for uh, good things, of course. Appreciate that, Chuck. Very excited to, uh, to, to be at the helm now. Um, you know, and we, you know, you know, we have this saying that we play, you know, our guys currently play for you guys. So yeah. uh, they, they want to make you guys proud um, to be a Wildcat. So, um, you know, I, I'm glad to I'm glad to hopefully uh, make sure we keep our culture strong um, and, and continue to impress you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're all excited to get the season started. So let's do this. Let's let's start. Let's take you back to your roots in Not Brooklyn. There. Talk about your, your family and growing up in Brooklyn. How, how did you get to love to come to love the game of basketball on the streets of Brooklyn, Kyle? Well, you said it. Um, you know, back then the, the game was in the park. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, until I was, no exaggeration, it might sound crazy, but until I got to college, I played most of the time outside by far. Um, and that's like, you know, you tell that to a kid now that that doesn't sound <laughs> real. But right. to you guys, I'm sure that that's like just how it was. Like we, we played outside um, and that's what you did in the summertime, especially you just went outside. I uh, went to a uh, neighborhood park and just were there literally all day. Um, and I was just one of those kids who, you know, whenever I got a chance, whether it was after school or all day on the weekends or all day, every day in the summer, you know, you went either just to your park and played pickup games or you um, played in, you know, street ball tournaments. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there was a lot of, and, and being a Long Island guy, the games, the runs were always in the city, you know, in Brooklyn and Manhattan and Queens. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times I traveled into the city as a kid just to play with those guys in the city, you know, and did you get to play in any of those, uh, those big summer league games at uh, some of those bigger places like the Rucker or any of those things? Yeah. Yeah. I played in Rucker Park um, for sure. And, and a bunch of other, you know, West Fort and, you know, all, all those uh, at the time, um, big, huge tournaments. And the, the, to this day, I think um, some some others have taken those over. But, you know, I, I played in all those tournaments. There, there, there are days where you, you know, you, you play the game at two and then you go play another game at five and then you play another game at eight, nine. You know, yeah. that's just how it was back right. then. Um, and yeah. one might be in, um, in, in Manhattan, the other one might be in the Bronx, and then you got to come back to Brooklyn and you got to hurry back to get to your, your last game. That's just how it was. So you went, you wound up going to Brooklyn Friends School, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you won a state championship in, in 2003. What was that like? It was awesome. I, I think anytime you win a championship at any level, um, there's just a, a sense, as you, as you know, uh, there's just a sense of unity um, in that accomplishment. Um, it really doesn't matter the level, 
right? So, you know, we, we, we were in the C division, which is not, you know, New York City basketball, especially at that time was very competitive. Yeah. We were at like a, a, a the C division, um, um, but still, um, you know, it was a group of guys that know, knew each other, maybe some of us since sixth grade and uh, we just stayed together and knew each other and um, really bonded and, and, and came together and won a championship. It was an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, time in our lives, something I'll never forget. Chuck, did you, Chuck, want, did you, you say 2003? Yeah. Did you say yes. 2003? I believe yes. Syracuse won the national championship in 2003. <laughs> That's right. That's true. I just want to put that, that out coming. there. I just <laughs> right. want to put that out there. <laughs> Any chance he has, Kyle, you know, he has to throw in the and, arm. And I, I, who was the, the I, I believe there was a Brooklyn guy involved with that. Who, is yeah, it, it was a Brooklyn guy. That's is that, right. is, is, was that, was that Carmelo's, was that, was that Carmelo's uh, yep. championship? Was he <laughs> around for that one? Very Listen, good. If, if we're counting, you know, you had to get that right because there's only been one over there, Kyle. You understand, right? <laughs> if we go back and forth, Sonny and I, oh. there's been three over here, you know, so you might have gotten confused, you know? Yeah, you can see him behind him, right? You can't miss it, right? You can see him. <laughs> right. So, so, you, so you come in. So now you, you, you have the Caribbean influence at home. Mom and dad are from the Caribbean, right? Yeah. Your dad played a little bit too. Talk about that. Did he, did he influence you into getting involved with basketball? Definitely influenced me uh, in getting involved with basketball. I don't know how much he played. Um, you know, but uh, he, he definitely influenced me uh, in getting involved. We um, he's the one who was driving me to the tournaments and um, driving me to games. And um, we would argue uh, watching TV growing up about uh, different games while watching, you know, the Bulls, the Knicks, all, all, all those things. So um, definitely a huge influence in me getting into the game. Yeah, that's great. And then when you got recruited, you wind up, you know, you're another Patriot League guy because the last guy we had in your seat was a Patriot League guy, right? Yeah. So uh, played at Lehigh. What did it come down to? What schools recruited you? What were your final schools? Uh, I mean, a bunch of schools in in the Patriot League. Uh, Bucknell being one of them where Coach Wright played. Um, the NEC. Um, you know, I was a, the, a right, just right around that level. The MAC. Um, th those type of schools. Yeah, that's that was good. So you wind up, you wind up going there and then talk about your transition to the coaching field. I know you started in the film room with us. I remember you being there, you know, that's where yeah. we kind of met, you know, when, yep. when you were in that position, Absolutely. talk about how you got there. Yeah. You know, I was, um, when I finished playing, um, you know, I, I tried attempted to go overseas for a couple of years or tried to be uh, my, my goal was, all right, you know, I didn't make the NBA. I'm going to go overseas and I'll be there for 15 years. Right. Um, I think that's what everybody thinks. And, you know, I went over there and, you know, went to a couple different countries and, you know, I, I just got, was kind of bouncing around, didn't really get a home. And uh, when I came back at the end of the last place I was, was which was in um, Puerto Rico, um, you know, I, I still was one foot, in, one foot in, one foot out. But I, I decided, like, all right, let me just think about getting a, a master's degree. Um, you know, and, and, and Chuck, you know this, um, you know, there's there's a program on most college campuses called a graduate assistant where you can work for a team and get your um, school paid for. So that was my thought process. Um, and, you know, so I told a couple of people that I knew um, in the um, summer basketball world, the AAU world that, hey, I'm looking to get involved with a team. And it was just fate that, you know, I got connected with uh, Pat Chambers, who was the associate head coach at Villanova at the time. Um, he, I'll never forget, he came and met me on my parents' steps in Brooklyn. Um, and, you know, we, we just hung out for maybe 30, 45 minutes. And he told me at the time, he was like, All right, look, I think this is going to work out. Um, and you know, next thing you know, it might have been a month later, I was on campus I was, and I was the video coordinator, which was not the role that I wanted to go for. I wanted to be a graduate assistant, but the video coordinator job was open and, uh, you know, I wasn't going to turn that down. So, um, yeah. that, that's the, that's the origin story. Any foot in the door is good at that point, right? Exactly. Exactly. What, what were some of your next steps then? So video coordinator, did you get to the graduate assistant or did you move into assistant? So a video coordinator is, so grad assistant would actually be an even more entry level than video coordinator. Uh, okay. Graduate uh -huh. assistants are completely unpaid. Um, and then, <laughs> you know, then comes a video coordinator. And from video coordinator, my first 
uh, year in the business was 2000, uh, the 2008-2009 season. That's the season that uh, Villanova uh, went to the Final Four. Um, uh, and then from there, uh, my, my second year, um, after my second year, I left to be an assistant coach at Niagara University. Uh, and I was there for three years, three seasons. Um, and after the third season, you know, we had a pretty good year uh, under Coach Mihalik. Uh, we ended up going to the NIT that year. Um, you know, and we, you know, it, it's it's much different at the mid-major level. Like if you don't, we we ended up winning our league, but lost in the tournament. So we weren't afforded that ticket to get to the big dance. So the NIT was a huge deal for us. Uh, uh, so we, we lost in the NIT. Um, but, you know, because of the season we had, Coach Mihalik got the job at Hofstra University. Um, and Both places, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's, there's a coincidence. Stop. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, and he, uh, he was nice enough to bring me with him to Hofstra. Um, that was about April. Um, and so he got the job in April. Um, and, you know, we go through the entire s- spring, go through the entire summer recruiting. Um, and then in mid-August, Billy Lang left to go to, uh, he was the associate coach at Villanova, went to the Sixers. Um, and then Coach Wright brought me back on um, as assistant coach. And I was here for eight years. Um, and then last year, I was at Fordham University for a yep. year as the head coach, and yep. here we are. But let me ask you about Jay, right? And and the um, the way that it's set up, and like because Chuck said it quite clearly, the family, part of the family, the family felt good. Talk about how Jay helped establish a lot of that that culture, that feeling. Like you're in. Once you're in, you're always in. Even though you went to Niagara there was a real good chance you were coming back to Villanova. Talk about the the whole vibe with Villanova basketball. Uh, I mean, I think you said it, uh, the, the word is family, um, you know, and you know, I think that, you know, a lot of people talk about being a family, right. but, um, you know, I think, you know, this is a, a special place where it, it really actually means something. Um, and, you know, it starts with the alums and the guys who played here, um, who, you know, come back um, and are truly a part of the program. Um, and because of that, you know, the guy, the guys see how much pride everyone has in the program. Um, I think it starts to foster pride in themselves as well. Um, and, you know, and that, that filters through from the, the head coach to the players and then the assistant coaches as well. Like you, you come into a situation, you don't know it. Me as a young kid coming in, seeing what this program is about, you see Chuck Everson coming back. You see, um, you, you know, you see Randy Foy coming back. You see all these different people, a part of the program that were big time, um, in, in their, in their day. Um, and, and you just see how impactful it is in their lives. And it, it just, it just, you know, falls off on you as well. It just rubs off on you and, and you become the, you, you become the same person who has the, that type of pride in the program. So, so is it talked about or is it understood? How is that communicated? How, how has that gotten to the younger or the new people that you bring into the culture? How is that message carried across? I think it's, I think it's just, uh, I think that, you know, from the old guys coming back, having conversations to the current staff, um, giving an origin story on on how we got to where we are now. Um, And I think the biggest uh, vehicle is the players that are on the current team. Um, I think it comes from the older guys and filters through the younger guys. Um, You know, our freshmen now, you know, they, they're, they're coupled with the older guys who kind of show them the ropes. Um, And then those guys, uh, take off and, and, you know, enter their uh, chosen field of business and the, the younger guys become the older guys and we bring new guys in and those older guys teach the younger guys what it means to be a, um, a part of this culture. And uh, I think that that's the way it uh, kind of has stayed steady over the last couple of years. Yeah, I How think, well, it, I'm sorry, go ahead, Sonny. I was say, I'm assuming that it's the same in the coaching ranks too. Is that sort of so a guy who's been there a little longer might bring the new video coordinator or the new GA and say, hey, here's how we do things. Because Jalen Brunson talked about this, you know, kind of a little more detail with him and his his uh, experiences with it. And I'm, I'm just assuming that it's that way with the coaches. Because when I did 
a couple of coaching clinics that he did. And I was a high school coach at the time. I was like this, you could tell it was different. It was just a different, it was a different vibe. It was, it was really palpable is what I'll say. Yeah, I think it's very similar in the coaching ranks. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, one thing I think Coach has done a, a really good job of is kind of promoting from within. And, the, you know, I started as a video coordinator. There's a, you know, a George Halkovich, who's our associate head coach, started as a graduate manager. Um, Mike Nardi played, who was another one of our assistant coaches, played yeah. at Villanova, then started um, as a development role and worked his way all the way up. Um, and then Dwayne Anderson, same thing, played at Villanova and then came back after being an assistant coach um, for years um, and then came, still came back as a, um, oper in an operations role as well. So, um, yeah, I, th I think that that's how it's passed, passed down um, through the generations. Kyle, talk about, you know, we, we had, like Sonny said, we had Jalen on the other night. We spoke with Jalen, okay? Yep. And one of the things that impressed me about Jalen, amongst others, is that, you know, when he came in, you know, he had to play behind Arch and learn from Arch. And you talked about the older guys teaching the younger guys, okay? But it takes a special kind of person. It takes quality people with character to be able to do that. How do you find out, like when you're recruiting a kid, you know, from wherever, right? How do you, what kind of due diligence do you have to do to, to find out, like, are they going to be able to fit the mold of, of playing here, you know, and are they going to be one of these guys that um, is not more about me than we, you know what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's just about having uh, genuine real conversations um, and a recruiting process can be tough, right? You, you're a kid that's getting recruited by Villanova. Odds are you're getting recruited against other really great schools like Syracuse yeah. being one of them. Um, all, all the all the greats, right? So um, when you're in that spot, there's a sense of competition um, to woo that kid and get them to come to your school. I think the trick of it is um, to, while you are trying to recruit the kid, also having a genuine conversation and not saying things just to get the kid to come to your school. Um, and I think that that's what I think Coach Wright does did a great job of um, and we've all learned from him is having genuine conversations where you're actually explaining what it will be like when you're here um, and not just putting on a show to recruit the kid. Right. And I, I guess you, you have to go through the, you know, these kids today, they have AAU coaches, high school coaches, the parents, their buddies, their AAU program. I mean, you basically have to recruit everybody at that point, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, years ago, there was at least two or three people in a, in a circle, you know, the parents maybe being one of them, sometimes not. Um, now it's the parents, a trainer, um, high school coach, AU coach, uh, you know, there's, there, there, there's a lot of people you have to touch and you know, what? rightfully so. I think, you know, this, this, this world has expanded and, um, you know, it, it's become much more specialized and, and, and kids, you know, have, a lot of people that are that are in their life that they um, look to for mentorship. So it's just kind of what it is in the business right now. So um, yeah, it, it's definitely uh, it's definitely not just the kid that you're talking to and recruiting. Yeah, you know, I, I, I you know, it's got to be tough. I mean, at at some point, you know, it, it becomes a full time a full time gig just trying to get through all those layers to get to the kid and his what he's all about, what his makeup is, right? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, you could look at it that way. I, I would look at it like everyone is going through the same thing. Right. right? It's not like, oh, uh, you know, we're going through this, but other guys are not. Um, so um, it, it, I, I feel like everyone, if everyone's going through the same thing, everyone's an equal playing ground, uh, then, it's, then it's fair. So um, no use complaining about it. And I, I, again, I, I really feel like, you know, uh, rightfully so, things have expanded um, to a place where kids have a lot of people around them who care about them and are, are helping them yeah. out with their decisions, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So, okay, so now let's let's get into you you coming out to Villanova and how that all went down. You know, we've only had I don't know if you realize this we've only we've only had six coaches since 1936. 
you know, uh, I know that's not lost on you, you know, um, and of those six coaches, I mean, we, really five, because you didn't even really get into your season yet. So it, it's just, yeah. it's, I think that's part of the reason why we're able to do what we do. There's not a lot of, some of the teams that don't have that type of yeah. uh, relationships that we have is because you have coaches coming in and out like 15, 20 different coaches in the last 15, 20 years, right? Agreed. Agreed. And, you know, even with our staff right now, there, there definitely is a change, right? But, you know, you look at the rest of our staff, uh, George Halkovich has been here for 13 years, Mike Nardi over 12, um, including his playing career, um, Dwayne Anderson approaching 10, including his pro, uh, playing, playing career, um, our operations guys, uh, Joey Flanner has been here for um, almost five years, five, six years now. So um, I definitely agree um, just having turnover. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, having guys who come back on your staff is definitely, um, you know, helps in, in, you know, stabilizing a program uh, for sure. So you know, we, talked, we talked a little about the history. So how does it feel? I mean, are you feeling any kind of pressure now that you've got the keys to the car? I mean, you know, you feeling any kind of pressure that you're coming in a for a, a hall of fame coach and B in, in the 103 years or so that we've had a basketball program at Villanova. Uh, and this, you know, I haven't heard this really talked about, but you are the first African-American coach at the university. I know that can't be lost on you. That's got to mean something special to you, uh, Kyle, and talk about those two things and the pressure that comes with that. Well, for me, I don't look at it really as pressure in that case, in that sense. I look at it as a, a sense of responsibility. Um, and the, the responsibility uh, in my mind is to you guys, uh, the, the former players, mm -hmm. um, the former coaches, um, to keep the culture strong in, a, in, a, 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 in an upward trajectory. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if we, I, And I really believe if we do that, we'll be fine. But um, the look and feel, the bones of the program, what we do every day, um, you know, when, when you guys come around, like our, our goal is that you guys look at it like, all right, this is Villanova. This is what we're used to. This is being done our way. Um, and, and we know what our way is. So um, that's the sense of duty and responsibility, I feel. Um, it, I don't know if the, the pre pressure, all, all that stuff, uh, that, that, that is all um, for the former players and coaches. Uh, and then, you know, being the first you know, African-American coach, you know, I, I look at it again as a, a, a huge responsibility. And huge. You know, I know, I know uh, for, for me, you know, when, when I was growing up and I had um, African-American people uh, to look at uh, in uh, prominent positions, it definitely helped me see these things were possible. Um, and, and it was a definite sense of uh, uh, someone I could look at and say, all right, wow, I, I could do that. I can achieve that. So um, I, I look at it the same way. That's my responsibility to, um, you know, walk a, a narrow path and make sure that um, if there's a, a kid like myself looking up and saying, wow, that that's something that's pretty cool that I would like to do. Um, I think it's my responsibility just to um, carry myself in a in a you know reputable way. Yeah, that, can that's I, a good, great answer, Kyle. Go ahead. Can, can, I, can I ask you to share with us the process of how you got notified or, <laughs> you know, just, just, yeah, I mean, just share with us whatever details. I'm, we're not prying because, you know, we are professional journalists, but just you. share with us a little bit of how that whole thing went down because it was a shock to everybody. Yeah, including me, including me. I, uh, you know, I, I was going through my season. Um, and you know, like I'm, I'm tapped in with all the Villanova community and, you know, we, we all were really, t um, close knit and, and stay in contact. So you heard little things here and there. Um, uh, but like I, I being around coach for, you know, prior to that 10 years of my life, I don't know if there was one year that coach did not talk about retiring. Um, like, and normally it would be in like a fit of rage. Right. So I'm thinking, all right, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he always talks about retiring mid year. Right. Go again. <laughs> um, and so I'm like, right, I'm, not, I'm not thinking anything of it. Um, and then, you know, literally maybe uh, a couple weeks, uh, maybe 10 days or like whatever it was exactly. Um, Mark Jackson called and said that this was a, a possibility and it, it just went really quickly from there. Even then, I didn't really believe it. Um, and then it just happened really, really quick.
tell tell us about the phone call. Tell us how you felt. Tell just give us just walk us through that that the emotions of that. Uh, I mean, literally three days before the uh, um, before the announcement, before it kind of went public. Not the announcement, before it went public. Um, you know, I got a call that I would be interviewed. I went to do the interview, and maybe six hours later, I got the job. It was literally that quick. Um, so it, it was a very, very quick turn. So w- when you when you took over, when you got this thing, how did you keep everybody intact? Not just at Villanova, but the Fordham program stayed intact as well. H- how did you accomplish that, Kyle? Yeah. So I mean, Coach Wright. I mean, I, I for, on the Villanova side, I would say Coach that. I mean, I I I don't. I would be. I'd be lying if I just took a bunch of credit and say, oh, yeah, I did this, I did that. Um, I think Coach Wright took a, a great deal of pride in keeping everything intact when he left. Um, I think he, I, I think that he, he felt a, um, some responsibility to yeah. make sure that it was, it was intact. And um, I think that he, he went through and, and you know, taught, helped us re-recruit some guys. Um, he already had conversations with the staff. Um, you know, so if, for, for me, it was kind of just coming back and re-engaging with the people I already knew um, really well as the, in, in, in terms of the staff. And um, there was only one class of guys that two classes technically of guys that I did not, wasn't around for their recruitments. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was just, you know, the guys that we, we, I was around for to, re, to help recruit, just re-engaging with them as well. And uh, forming new bonds with uh, the, the newer guys that I hadn't, uh, you know, really got to build a relationship with. And, um, you know, like I said, I think most of the uh, most of the praise has to go to Coach Wright um, and the assistant coaches who, who really kept this thing together. Um, uh, so I, for sure, I, that's that's the Villanova side. And then the Fordham side, um, you know, I think, um, you know, in this in this day and age, um, I, I think it's similar to to why I was chosen uh, for this job. To you know, when you when you build something, um, you know, and then to completely dismantle it, you got to start all over. Um, yeah. And I think that um, that's what Fordham Fordham saw as well. I think they saw a program that was going in the right direction. Um, and Keith Ergo, who's the head coach um, now, had a huge part in helping to build that. Um, and they made a decision to try to keep it going um, instead of uh, starting anew. Yeah, it worked out great for both both clubs. Yeah, which is which is nice and very rare. Yeah, yeah. Usually, usually the new guy comes in, he brings his guys in, and the guys that are already on the team all of a sudden yeah. now it becomes you know I'm not it's not my guy. You know the whole the whole exactly. thing. Exactly. So, yeah. so I was glad that that worked out that way. You know. Yeah. So you know now you know. Coach Mass started this whole thing, you know, and then Jay put his fingerprints on it and took what Coach shared with him, and it, he made it his. How are you going to make this yours and put your fingerprints on the program? Well, I, I think we're in a, a completely new time, um, just in college basketball. We have, we've had, you know, seismic changes um you know anyone know anyone who's involved with college basketball knows like the transfer portal um being one of them um and then now nil being another um so you know the the the, i don't think you know obviously we've had two things in the last two three years that have completely uh changed the landscape so um I, i think that our um you know our goal now is to hold as much of our culture um, intact and uh, and our ideals intact as we um, move into just a new era and a new reality in, in college sports and that and that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Um, I think oft, oftentimes a lot of people look at the the changes as bad. Um, I look at the changes as just changes um, yeah. and just new things that you um, you know just have to grow with and and deal with. Um, and and I think that we're our, our think our staff is more than. Um, capable of dealing with the new changes and keeping our culture intact. So we're, we're excited. So that, that was one of the things we talked to Jay about was the NIL and he had just gotten off a conference call and, you know, that whole ball was starting to roll and it was such a new thing that they didn't know what to expect. And so I, I imagine now we've got a little bit of our, our hands around it a little bit. No, so I, 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 nobody, I, nobody knows. Nobody what's has their hands around it. No, no. <laughs> 
Anybody who says they have their hands 100% around. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Bad word. Everything changes. We're, we're, like we're, there's, there's, there's a new article out every week or so that, you know, points to just new changes. So it, it's a, it's a um, rapidly changing thing um, that you just got as it's, it's now you never think about it. you, ne- you know, you go back 20 years ago, like no one transferred. Right. And if you transfer it, it was like, I don't want to make these, these numbers up, but a hundred guys, right. right. Now maybe, maybe right now you, we're into, you know, 1200, 1500. It's crazy. Um, you know, that, like that, like, just think about how different that is. You're talking about, you know, there's only what less than 370 teams. Right. So you're talking about multiple guys per team on yeah. average. You're talking about some entire teams, right? Mm-hmm. So the, to, to, to think about where we are compared to then just with the transfer portal, now think about where we are just with NIL and um, what it means that, you know, guys are now getting paid. It's it's like, you know, the just it, it's just a, a different day. And like I said, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think that, you know, I think I do. I think guys deserve to get paid. I think that, you know, uh, benefiting off their likeness is a, is a really good thing. I think guys having the opportunity to leave and go elsewhere um, if they if they so choose and they feel like that's better for them, I think is a good thing. So, um, yeah. yeah. And now you're constantly recruiting, too. It's not like, you know, you used to think I got a kid. We're here for four years, and and now you got to constantly recruit the kid, right? You know, is to some degree, I would think, right? Well, I mean, I don't know if we look at it like that. I mean, I think that we would like our guys to be here for their their right. entire, for their years as uh, the same way they they've been. Um, I, I think unless they leave to go to the NBA early, you know, we yeah. we, we love when they do that, but yeah, right. Uh, we we still our our goal is to have um you know people come into the program. Who, who want to get their degree. Um, and if they leave early for the NBA, great. Um, but we want them, we want guys who are serious about their education and, and, and want to get a Villanova degree and be part of this for life. So that's a good lead in Kyle to the current team. Let's, cause we only have a couple yeah, minutes. I was going to ask you about that. So, yeah, go ahead. so let's go. talk about, let's talk about the current team. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of excitement around this freshman class. You know, everybody got to see uh, Cam and Mark play on the USA uh, team this year. You know, it's funny because the last time we had a guy that won the MVP of the uh, USA team was was Jalen, and he came in with high accolades. Talk about Cam Whitmore and what your expectations are for Cam. Uh, Well, first I'll say uh, a belated happy birthday to Jalen. I think yesterday was his birthday. So um, definitely a Villanova great. But um, Cam Whitmore has been amazing, man. He's, he's, He's really coming along. Um, you know, he's he's one of the most talented players that I've been around in coaching. Um, his speed, his athleticism, um, his ability to score, his ability to guard, his ability to just make plays because of his athleticism defensively is is really impressive. Um, and then, you know, I think what's also been as impressive as is his, uh, um, you know, his ability to learn what we do. Um, and, and I think he's he's in a great spot. Yeah, and his and his uh, his partner on that team uh, was Mark, you know Armstrong. He, you know, he showed out pretty well too. With some of the guys that you have, you know, that are coming back, the Caleb's and and uh, Slater and and some of these other guys. You got. Do you see us playing a little more, you know, up tempo style of game and getting up, you know, making your defense kind of uh, generate the offense for you? Yeah, you get, you know, running the ball a little bit. Yeah, I think we're definitely gonna try to get up and down this year. I think we, um, I, I think we have the type of team to do it. You know, uh, like you mentioned, two guys with Cam and Mark, um, and then you know uh, Brandon Slater's athleticism, yeah. Caleb Daniels, and um, you know Eric. Eric actually yeah. is pretty good as a decision maker, bringing the ball up as well. And you know, all of our guys. Um, Angelo Brizzy is a guy who you know hasn't played um, as of yet, but has been part of a program for a year. Um, Chris Arch um, yeah. you know, does a good job with that as well. Like I, I really like all of our guys. Um, you know, from the from the older guys down through um, our freshmen. I, I think we got a, a really good opportunity here to to bond as a team, and I'm I'm excited to get these guys out there, man. It's it's um, if it's felt like the summer went through. Actually, like people say, the summer go through fast. I, I think our summer went through. Um, you know, at, at regular speed for us, like just yeah. being on the floor with these guys and 
um, doing a lot of teaching and um, it's been great. You know, one guy I, I have to talk about too, and Sonny will, Sonny will laugh, but Eric Dixon, man, he, he came such a long way in a short period of time. He, one of the most improved guys probably in the program, other than Eric Paschal is the only other guy I can think of who improved as quickly as, as Eric has improved. Talk about what he's going to mean to the program this year. Well, I mean, I think Eric, uh, I mean, those of us who saw him in high school knew what he was capable of. Um, but if you never saw him in high school, you didn't know the type of score he was and his um, his basketball IQ and um, the things he did while he was in high school. So, uh, I mean, I don't know. He played I, for Gary Massey, isn't that right? He, didn't exactly. He play? Yeah, okay. Exactly. Exactly. So we all knew in the program, it was just a matter of time on when it clicked, um, he was going to be a great, we all knew he was going to be a great player. It was just a matter of when, um, and, and to his credit, you know, watching from afar last year, you just saw it clicking. Um, and I, I think he's taken another step this year. So, um, excited to watch him this year as well. I got to ask you about now let's talk fashion for a second. You're taking over for GQ royalty here. <laughs> and they, right. they have a tailor that just passed away. Do you have the connections to get those kind of threads on the sideline again? No. What's, no, what's going on with that? And here's the thing. You know, Coach. <laughs> Chuck can help him. Yeah. So a certain thing that people don't know is Coach used to buy us a couple of suits a year. So without that, without that, I don't, I, I'm lost, man. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do without <laughs> Coach's wise counsel. Um, in his so class. are you going back to the suits, Kyle? Are you going to stay in sweats? Well, I think we're 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 holding off on making a decision uh, just based off what the NBA guys do, um, and then you know trying to talk to some college guys to see where everyone is. Um, so, but I, I think the NBA guys are, are meeting, you know, like literally as we speak. I think they'll know in the next week or two. So everything kind of trickles down. So we're still trying to figure it out what what, what exactly we're going to do in terms of uh, the gear. Yeah. Okay, just just curious because I, I, you know, it's inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, listen, Sonny's listen, a fashion listen, plate. You know, that's the listen, whole. Thing. I'm I'm going to try to uh, accomplish a lot, just like Coach uh, Wright did here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, step in those shoes, those those size thirteens that he has, though. But <laughs> in terms of dressing, I don't know if that's one thing I'm going to be able to mimic. All right, so <laughs> I know I know you're up against it. So la last question, okay? Give us give us your thoughts on what your relationship is and was with coach, uh, what he meant to you and what he has meant to you uh, throughout your career. And, you know, and what do you foresee coming up uh, with the program this year and beyond? Uh, I'm sorry. I, uh, my, uh, for some reason, I could not hear you for that last question. Okay, so my, I said, we, we're running short on time. I got, I promised Mike, I would, I would get you out on time. Yeah, so yeah. La last question. So tell us about, your relationship with coach Wright before, you know, before, and then to what he means to you. And I know, I know he's been a big figure in his, in your life, you know, uh, you know, what he means to you and what do you foresee for the, the future of the program going forward uh, in the Kyle Neptune era? Uh, as it pertains to coach. Yeah. So for, for me, um, you know, Last year, it's interesting. Last year, Fordham, you know, be, it being my uh, first year away from Villanova, um, I was asked, like, tell me about Coach Wright. Um, and for the first, like, literally every interview for the first month um, of all the interviews, I was like, tell us about Coach Wright. And one thing I realized after maybe a month or two, I was saying something different every interview. <laughs> um, and I'd be like, yeah, oh, man, this guy, his basketball, just his mind, his basketball mind is just so keen. He just knows exactly what he wants. Then another interview, I'd be like, oh, man, well, he, he's just a great person. He's the best person you you could possibly be around. And then it was like, all right, well, he, he just runs a program so well. He knows exactly what it takes to run a program. He's the best CEO. Um, and I think that when what you realize um, after you, you look back, you're like, he's good at everything. Um, he's just the ultimate coach. Um, he just embodies it 100% from being a leader um, to a teacher um, uh, to X and O guy, whatever it is, he's really good at it. Um, and he spends the time doing it. And I, I think that's um, what, what the coaches that have been around them 
Um, I think that's what he's kind of instilled in us as well is that he never let us just be a specialty guy. Like, okay, you just do this. He's, he's always implored that we, um, strive to be good in everything that we do. So that's, that's what, um, that's the thing that now looking back, um, that I'll try to take from him the most is just trying to excel in everything that you do. How about your relationship as what he, what he has meant to you over the years? I mean, everything. He's been a, a mentor. He's a person that brought me into the business, um, hired me, for, uh, and then, you know, brought me back after I left um, and then uh, mentored me through um, being a young adult and now being a, a grown adult. Um, so I, I think that he's been, you know, one of the biggest driving forces in, in my life. If, um, you know, you take out my parents and um, a couple other family members, uh, and close friends, he, he's right there um, in terms of the, the biggest mentor that I've had in this business and, and, and more importantly in life. Well, listen, what a great way it is to end the, this conversation with you, Kyle. Thanks so much uh, for coming on and giving us some time and hanging with us a little bit. You know, right. just so you know, I, I you know, I, I changed jobs. So I made them give me stations in Philadelphia so I can come to more practices. Oh, there we so, go. Awesome. So we'll <laughs> so you'll be you will be around a little more often than we were the last year or two. So uh, great. I appreciate you, great. man. Thank you for everything and best of luck this year. Appreciate it. You guys are gonna do great, right? Can't wait right, to see sir. you guys. Thanks, All guys. Right. Yep. Thanks, Talk coach. Appreciate you it. Listening, you've been listening to the Big East Rewind with Chuck Everson and Sonny Sparrow. The Big East Rewind is produced and directed by Nick Chico Chorus and Daryl Gurney. You can check us out on all things social media by putting Big East Rewind in the search bar. And you can go on uh, YouTube and Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. And on YouTube, uh, we'd like you to like, share it with your friends, and subscribe if, if possible. So thanks a lot for joining us. Have a great night.